guys. Welcome back to the leadership series. This is 1.2 of leadership foundations and it is why do God's will. So we're going to jump right into the verses. Mark 335 doing God's will makes you family for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Philippians 2 3 through 16 do God's will for his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. The transliteration of that is God is the one working in you both to will and work according to his good pleasure. Let's dig into the Greek. So this very specifically says in the Greek that the God who works in you both, right? So in is inside of you. That means this is about Christians who already have Christ inside of them. Now, the will is wanting what is best because someone is ready and willing to act. The Lord extending his best offer to the believer, wanting to birth persuasion of faith that empowers them, manifests his presence, etc. To be resolved or determined to use one's own power, inclination, and great delight with a deliberate, intelligent mood that expresses the desire for something. So this is what we're talking about when it's God's will. Then to work according to good pleasure. Work is to be at work, to be operative, to accomplish and display activity, to properly energize working in a situation that brings it from one stage or point to the next, like an electrical current that can bring a light bulb to shine, presently working, observably working. According to good pleasure, so according is on behalf of, for the sake of, exceeding and beyond for one's advantage. And good pleasure is the pleasure of God, of his goodness and faith in his ability for the purpose of God, for you to fulfill everything good and worthy of the calling, his purpose and desire for men, which is always of good intent. Okay, then we're moving on to John six thirty-eight to 39. Christ came to do the will of the Father, which is... We are to be Christ-like, and Christ-likeness is to do the same. So, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing but raise it up on the last day. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 6 through 7. You're called to holiness, and if you reject holiness, you're rejecting God. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And then it goes on a whole list of things that I'm skipping. You can go and read that. But then it says, For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this, what's this? The holiness, does not reject man, but rejects God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Matthew 7.21 He who does the will of God enters heaven. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. 1 Peter 2.15 Doing good is doing God's will. And why? It puts fools to silence. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Okay, so here's the graphic that kind of pulls it all together. Why do God's will? God works in you to will and to do. Why? For his good pleasure. Now, remember, if you reject holiness, you reject God. So the opposite is you're going to seek holiness. That would be by doing his will. So by doing God's will, these things will be evidence. Okay. You will be like Christ. 
Jesus will be your family. You will enter heaven. You will be doing good and you will silence fools. So that is why we do God's will. Okay. And I'll see you next time.